Okay, guys, we have Ronan O'Brien here with us today from Brett Wave, Ireland. Ronan, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and what it is you do? Hey, hey people, thanks for taking the time to, to come in and listen to three lads talk about something out of the norm, out of not an everyday language, but I'm Ronan O'Brien. I I'm I'm a Limerick man. I am I've gone through a an array of businesses and portfolio work to find myself here coaching and working in, in breathwork. And um specifically it's breath wave is the, the dynamic of, of breath work that I use. And um yeah, I, I do a Wednesday nights and I was delighted to have the lads jump on and so hope you enjoyed the conversation. Thanks, Ron. And as you've said, uh, Pat's only crossed very recently and I jumped on to I jumped on to a couple of your breadwork sessions now and I was telling Cormac they were very deep for me, very deep, very powerful and in somewhat magical mm. um those experiences. I don't I have done breadwork in the past. I've never gone as deep as I've gone in them couple of sessions I've done with you. Mm. Um and I was just wondering is that the kind of feedback that you get from everyone that comes onto your thing? Is it always that deep or do people have an array of different experiences with that threat work? Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of a yes and no answer. It's, it's always that um, deep in terms of the, the presentation and, and, and the giving of it. And depending how a, any particular night finds somebody in their mood or in their ready for openness or in their ready for really getting in and not being so distracted. I, so every week people do have amazing experiences, uh, but some weeks, some people might have a, just use a, 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 an easy way to, to describe it, like a, a five out of 10 or the six out of 10, or, and then every now and then it's 10 out of 10. So it, it doesn't, it's not always the same. Mm. So that, I have found that people who, who who log in for the first two or three and get and find oh, wow this is amazing and then as they continue it slacks off a bit and it slacks off a bit mostly because people are going back looking for the 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 great experience that they encountered the week before or two weeks before and they're like they they have this expectation build up and like everything else when you build something up with two expectation it doesn't meet us you're like oh i must be doing something wrong and there's a slip off then you know um there's a slip off from people who have great experiences and then they might run into that and but when they come back again after a break they often find that they were like oh it's it's there again you know because it's just the expectation level is what's in people's way and just I was just thinking if anyone that's listening that might not know exactly what Brett work is, yeah, yeah. How would you how would you describe that to someone now that's hearing this for the first time? Like you said, a little bit out of the norm of the normal day of conversation. How would you describe what the Brett work you do is or the Brett Wave? So the, the, the Brett Wave is a conscious connected breathing cycle. And it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's an unforced, relaxed repetition of connecting into how you're breathing connecting into the body connecting into how you're breathing and it's the, the way i do it online is is in a meditative way so it's it's relaxed enough that it's meditative and it's not strong or, or or pushed but for anybody who is completely new to to breath work and it, it's been kind of thrown around that it could be breath work now is like yoga was in the mid 90s or something you know it was like yeah you heard about it but it was for those kind of hippies or those kind of people that that were something else and i think it's somewhere in the same category now and but brett work is something that we do obviously every day so the brett wave work that i do online is in that category and then i do um clinic clinical breath work 
called Buteco work, uh, Buteco breath work. And that is more about, like I'd have clients that were from the long COVID or who were after experiencing COVID and had respiratory difficulties, or they had um, asthma, people who were having asthma and they needed, they heard of the, how breath work and breath exercises can facilitate them having a stronger respiratory system. Uh, old age, COPD, it covers the, the Buteco work or the clinical breath work covers a lot of that area. Um, but I go under the banner of, of Breathwave. Um, I also do the Oxygen Advantage breath work, which is many of the mixed details that come in around um, sports performance. Um, so breath work is something that we do, we breathe every day, obviously, but people forget that it's the most it's the most common thing we do every day. And we get hung up in the health or the wellness category of, you know, getting sticking to a diet or, you know, drinking more water or getting more exercise. And they are all extremely valuable. But people forget that it's you can go weeks without food, days without water, and how many how many minutes can you go without breathing? So Very true. Mm-hmm. so it's the most it's the most constant thing that we do. And if we can get it right, and if we, if we can get it consciously programmed right into our system, the, the health benefits are they're superior. Like they really are superior in terms of like your heart rate variability, your, your ability to detoxify. So when you're breathing correctly, 70% of your detox is through your breath. Um, it's, it's, it's so it, you know technically it's it, it's a weight loss tool mm. and ronan just something that just came to me there when you're talking is what was it that got you into doing breath work like what what drove you to want to delve into this and discover what this was yeah so initially my my, my background is in a as a strength and conditioning coach or in fitness and i was working in, in a lot in the corporate area and um you know i had my own kind of you know, deeper inquisitive questions about the nature of things and the nature of me and, and my identity and, and, and where it was resonating in, 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 in life. And I, I knew what it was like in a social structure. And, but I just felt there was, there was something more that, and, you know, I, I use the word spiritual, but there was something more kind of a niche that I was trying to scratch. And I came upon, um, oh, Graham, um, oh, Graham Hancock, sorry. I was gonna say Graham Norton, <laughs> no, Graham Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't know. Um, Graham Hancock, who's, a, who's an English writer and um, who's doing an awful lot of work with, uh, his, his theory is that we are a species with uh, amnesia. We're a species with amnesia and how that our, our pre-ancestral timeline is much, much further back than the current norm is thought of. And he's done a lot of work with, with a book called um, Fingerprints of the Gods. That was his big book. I'm, I'm pretty sure, and there's a lot of other corresponding academics in that area who say that you know human life was thousands of years previously than, you know, we currently, we currently understand. Um, so I'm listening to him and he starts talking about that. He does, he does this plant medicine called ayahuasca. And I'm looking at it going, I will ask, you know, just trying to spell it out. So that was, that was the first time I had kind of heard about plant medicine. And I had asked my friend and I'd kind of put out some words. And so we're going back, what, eight years ago um so we're still relatively at that beginning stage of you know the 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 joe rogan podcast might have been talking about dmt and i I got Mm. onto that you know listening to that later on but that was my first kind of where i heard about it and subsequently i would have i got onto other different podcasts and figured it out or heard about it more but I ended up doing a shamanic ceremony with um, with a Mexican doctor 
who had papers to travel with the sacred medicine. And my friend at the time, still my friend, was, was saying that, oh, it's, it's like ayahuasca, you know, you were asking about it. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. Um, and, that, you know, I had, you know, my background was just training and just, you know, healthy lifestyle and pub and drink. And, you know, so I hadn't come from a rave scene or I hadn't come from LSD or ecstasy or anything like that. I hadn't, that had just hadn't come across my plate. So when this came up, I just felt the urge to go and I drove up to Wicklow and we had a, an experience with a medicine called Buffo Alvarez or the toad medicine. And um, probably the single most changing point in my life and how that came to me with more questions to ask than answers than than answers that I got you know it just asked I was like had so many more questions and still do but it's um it's how that was the the start point of going down and, and trying to ask questions about the shamanic side of things and the indigenous medicine side of things plant medicine side of things and and in that I came across an experience where we were we did breath work and we did breath work with just a little smoke of uh, Santa Maria which is the the ceremonial the ceremonial context for for marijuana and how it, it's 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 very understood as a is a, is, a, is a plant medicine and a teacher medicine outside of, you know, calling it weed or calling it something like um, that, that's more, something more social. And so it was, it, the whole ceremony was held in that context and we did the breathing with it. And literally, you know, I'd taken a few smokes of, you know, marijuana before, but I took a smoke of this, you know, I was fine. And, but then when the breath work came in and the breath work came in and I just went off and just to, just an amazing journey that was again she was just so fantastic and but you know it, it was tough but it was fantastic in terms of where it went and um yeah that was how my first interaction with Brett work and i got curious about it after that mm -hmm. that was a powerful powerful way to get to get stuck into it anyway oh yeah it's um it was it was a sledgehammer like yeah mm. yeah big time yeah i think um <clears throat> from what you're saying there i mentioned on one of our earlier podcasts about like my experience as well with ayahuasca and it was for me it was as you said there like a hammer blow it was just probably the most difficult thing i've ever went through but at the same time one of the experiences i'm most grateful for looking back and for me as as well I think it left me with nearly more questions than answers but also i was just thinking like sometimes i even look back and be like was that all in my head or you know <clears throat> at the time it seems like there's this knowing that's like there is something more and then when you come back to reality and you know you're back home in ireland and you're just back doing the things you always did sometimes you're like jesus was that just all in my head and i suppose i i've <laughs> I've had a, multiple experiences, like spiritual experiences, as you'd call them. And I still, at the time, I'm like so certain that I've found some sort of truth in what what's going on. But then I'm also, when I come back to chat with people, I'm also like, okay, maybe that could be a trick of the mind as well. So it's always, there always seems to be some way I can rationalize it. So for you, is there, <clears throat> how do you know like yourself if, there's what you're experiencing is say uh, a past life or some other thing that you've forgotten and how do you know the difference between say tricks of the mind or yeah. what's actually real good question i mean and and and, and, and your very last well, what's actually real like that's that that's the biggest conundrum across the board you know in the in in, in all realities you know it's like what's actually fucking real the um <laughs> you know yeah. and I, you know when you get right down to listening to some really deep uh mm. some like i listened to a podcast with with uh, deepak chopra and i wouldn't normally go to him but again he was he was after after catching this this wave and i was like fuck he's really <sighs> describing some of the some of the the context of, and the deep learning that i would have you know received in 
in the the book for the toad medicine and um so i was and if i hadn't gone down that route i would i would have switched him off because you wouldn't have a clue where he, what he's talking about mm. um well from my perspective anyway um but yeah so i mean people do get run away with their imagination even even in plant medicine and it's a bit, as a bit of an escapism even you know that you know when something tough comes on in the medicine and you're like and you go off and you start looking for the fairies so you start looking for the the jaguar you want you want to see the colors or you want to see the you know show me the the entities and all this kind of stuff and and, and people go in there to to specifically to look for that and if they, and if they don't see it they, they, they think that oh it wasn't great or whatever but like the medicine is really about okay there's a physical healing with those medicines but there's also they're also there to test you in a way that makes you better as a person because we live this is the world we live in this is the families that we live around the friends we live around the work that we're in so i mean we've got to get better in in that area and not just have Otherwise, it's just tripping, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You know, and it's not work; it's tripping. And yeah, that's that's your thing. That's your thing. But it's not really going to progress you in 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 a lifestyle format that's more beneficial, we'll say. But just trying to make sure that I answer the question fully is that how do I know? I think I know because it wasn't something new that I had learned. It was a remembering. Mm. And it wasn't something that, you know, I was, it was something that I remembered. It was like a, a sense of home. It was a sense of understanding. It was a sense of connection where the mind was totally gone off the grid mm. and you were healing, you were hearing and, and feeling this information come through you with, with the ceremony, with the plant medicine, with your heart. And you were feeling it from that space in, in a much different, more conceptual or um, academic way. Mm. Yeah, I think that answers it quite well, because when you said the mind kind of shuts off and you're feeling with the, feeling it with the heart, I think that resonated with me because when I am experiencing those moments, it is more of a, just a remembering. It's like. I was with Martin Duffy recently and he was saying stuff to me and I was just like kind of nodding and he was like, you know this already. And I was like, I know. I was like, I do know this. It was like part of me, whether it was my soul or my heart, part of me did know everything he was telling me, even though technically it was the first time someone ever said it. I just, mm. part of me already knew the answers that yeah. he was giving me. I think when I'm in that experience, my head, my, my mind is switched off and it's more my heart connection. But I think it's when I come out that I start running over it and I'm like, well, you could logically say, he just guessed that thing because of this, or, you know, I think it's just when you're in the moment, you just have to trust that it's a true moment. And at the same time, whether it's real or not, doesn't really matter for me because once it makes you a better person, once it helps you grow, once you're seeing the world in a way that's benefiting your life and benefiting other people's lives, I think that's why you choose that reality because we all live in our own realities, I think. So um, for me, it's like, as long as I'm doing it, as you said, for the right reasons to become a better person and not just to get high. Mm. Sometimes feeling a bit high after is a nice bonus after a breathwork session, but I don't mm. go in there with that intention. Mm. You know, just on that, actually, and this relates to something that came up for me in one of your breathwork sessions, Ronan. Mm. On that question you asked there, Cormac, for me, what, what seems to come up for me in the breathwork and different things I'm doing is it brings things into realization for me. Like, after it, I'm like, I fucking knew that, but it just, it wouldn't come to me in a normal setting. Mm. And an example of that is I was doing this thing a while back, okay, called psychodrama. And I was doing it with a psychotherapist. And long story short with this, it's it's kind of like a role play. And it, I was discovering different parts of my soul, basically, and it was split into three parts. There was me as I am here. There was part of my addiction i was in addiction for over 10 years with alcohol and drug abuse and and that strong part of me was behind me and then there was another guy an isolated lonely part of my soul which was in the corner of the room mm. 
And I had to get into the, go stand over in the corner of that room and become that part of my soul. And I was visualizing it and stuff. And I, all I could see was that part of me was in a vast ocean with nothing around them, completely lost. Okay. And then I was doing your visualization and on one of the breath holds, I actually went back to that ocean and I was there by myself. Like I was before the psychotherapist had said to me, what's around you? What can you see? And I, there was nothing, just ocean. And all of a sudden in the breath hold, I didn't tell you this Cormac yet. Cormac started swimming like out of nowhere. Cormac swam in and then a load of other mates, a load of the guys from the men's circle that we'd be doing, all these people started like swimming into this place that I was lost in. And all of a sudden I was like lying there, literally lying there floating as if it was being held up. And so many people that I hadn't seen it in years. And all of a sudden, I'm not going to go into it too much, but like we were all rising up, Ronan, I didn't even know what you looked like properly, but you were there. Do you know what I mean? And it, the realization that was given me, I knew all that part. All it was telling me was that all them years you thought you were fucking on your own and that nobody gave a shit, that you were isolated. It's like everybody had been there all the time to help me if I had to just like let them in. Mm-hmm. And that was like a realization I had. And after the, that session where I was doing that psychodrama and I realized about this lost part of my soul, I didn't know that I want to hold on to that. Do you know, I, did, I, I, I kind of thought I wanted to get rid of it, even though I was told I shouldn't. And it wasn't until that in the breathwork session, that was only last week, mm. last Wednesday, that I was just able to accept it. And I was like, I can stop basically feeling so sorry for that part of myself. Because if I had to let the people in, which I feel like I have now, and like, I don't know, I just got such strength from that. And that's just on your question, Cormac. Like, I know that that, <laughs> I know that that didn't happen. I'm not stuck in an ocean and that, but it was like, it just literally just told me, you were never on your own. All you had to do was ask and let those people in. But I have such a visual of Cormac just mm-hmm. busting through the waves there and coming to save me, basically. And then everyone else, you know? So, yeah, from those experiences, I... It's always like a, a play for me, but I can take the message from that then, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, and then try and integrate that. Like you said, instead of just going in and getting the buzz, like trying to take what I can from it and then using that in life to keep progressing forward, to keep growing. And I'm going deep enough with stuff these days with the breath work and different things. And I'm just loving the journey. Mm. Some of it's hard to look at, you know, or some of it's hard to see and, Sometimes I'm, it's creeping in. And I'm like, why didn't I just realize that back then? But sure, there was no way to see it back then. You know, it's happening sometimes, when it's supposed yes, to happen. What I say, sometimes you just, you just got to make the mistakes to come out through the mm-hmm. other side, you know? And yeah. I mean, the what I'm imagining the, 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 the psychotherapeutic work was like, in shamanic terms, it sounds like um, oh, uh, bringing back your, your last part of your soul or your last part of your spirit, you know, soul retrieval mm-hmm. and yes. how you're inviting it back. And it, and it could, it could, you, you could be very right in, in saying that, you know, how you understand it, how the other, another way of, of maybe kind of look, angle for angle really of looking at it is that that's you for you were adrift when you, at that time you were adrift and you, and you, and you felt as you went back into that, into that, um, soul retrieval or that younger self that was just like you felt that you might not have been enough at that time to let to invite that part of yourself back in but now as you go back in and you revisited that in into that integration your brother was there your friends were there and like you were changed now and now you're able to go back and take that back in as well you know mm-hmm. take that yeah. soul part of your soul in you know just mm-hmm. it's just you know um but yeah, and it's and Martin Duffy does some fantastic work. He I, one of my first experiences again was was with Martin um, nine years ago, maybe. And I, I met Martin myself for the first time last week. You know, he's such a, he's such a he's such a linchpin for a lot mm. of this work going on in Ireland. You know, he is a great guy, and 
one of my one of my first experiences was on, on his couch and yeah and that, funnily that that took i think it took about three years to play out that 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 whole thing mm. uh, about the story that i got where it led me where it led me back and it led me back there i think two or three years later doing one of one of his shamanic um practitioner courses and so he just how the full circle happened there as well it was you know very 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 synchronistic mm. yeah. i think just when you're touching on the word synchronistic i think even with the podcast now we had a, a kind of a goal like who we wanted to target we're still kind of targeting like talking to some of them people we wanted to talk to from the start but it seemed to it's taken its own path now mm -hmm. we're doing one podcast and then someone saying oh you should interview this person next or i think in our last podcast you stumbled across us talking That's to right. mancom yeah it's almost free when you just trust that there's something else kind of guiding you without you having to force things because i think a lot of people just at the minute, one of the things we like to touch on in the podcast is like how men find their purpose. So I think it sounds like maybe you were led on this journey for a reason. And I believe that myself and Dara went on our own journeys and came back for a reason, come back together to do something to help other people. But I think everyone has that blueprint purpose. Mm. They just have to discover what it is. And I'd, what would your thoughts be on that? Do you think everyone has... Yeah, a deeper purpose. Yeah, I do. I think, and and that purpose is like so wide ranging. Uh, but I think people, are, especially men, are afraid of their their purpose because they they were such a uh, an achievement driven species that you know that you know if I succeed at this, then I can feel better about myself. So the the, the nucleus of where so much of dysfunction is in male and female, but very strongly in male is you just feel you're not enough and when you feel when you know that you're enough and you step into a, a place and you're like whether it's brett work or whether it's wolf brother work or whether it is um helping people at some other different level you don't have to try and prove anything and when you're not trying to prove anything people feel it and they kind of go yeah mm -hmm. they, they know what you know uh like you're not trying to mm -hmm. you're not trying to, there's no sales pitch yeah, when there's no sales pitch, you're like, oh, I will, I'll check it out, I'll check it out. Mm. Um, and maybe that's more of an Irish psyche, but um, mm. it definitely comes from that, from that place of knowing inside and feeling, and knowing that you're enough. When you know you're enough, people feel that. And they buy into it. Mm. Um, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And another thing I just um, wanted to ask you as well, Ronan, was... I seen you were doing a cacao ceremony mm. last Friday. Was that cacao and Brett Walk? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the funny thing was, I had actually seen your your Instagram page pop up a few times because the girl Amanda Walsh that you were doing that ceremony with, I used to work with Flyfit. I used to do personal training with Flyfit, so I I just seen Amanda on Instagram and stuff. And it's funny because one of the first, actually the only spiritual experience i would call it with um yoga was actually one of amanda's classes on the fly fit page i was doing it this is probably over a year ago now it must have been started lockdown i was just in some hips uh stretching pose looking at the window and all of a sudden like i started crying yeah. and like i couldn't i didn't even know what was going on because i didn't know the connection between yoga and anything like that yeah. So it was actually only when I spoke to someone else, they were like, yeah, that could, you hold a lot of emotion in your hips and stuff. So I didn't even know that. Mm. And I just seen then the other day that you and Amanda were doing this cacao ceremony together. Um, and I was just wondering, could you tell me a bit about what that is and how it works? And Yeah, she is, she's very gifted and she's very focused and integral about the work that she does and very much so with um, women's health. And cacao is, a very, is, a, is a, recognized as a feminine medicine as a heart opener. So we had decided that we chance we it was the third one that we did last week. And we just do it like every now and then, maybe every two months. And it worked, you know, it worked, we had 40 plus people on it. Um, couples, small groups, single people, you know, it was, 
and uh, just as just one of the one of the I'll just tell you one of the comments we got back afterwards was from a lady and she was like I just had 30 years of therapy in in, in three hours mm, you know, of course. She just, it was just like it was just so big and that can happen with yoga or breath work on its own but together with the cacao it's a beautiful synergistic effect of you know allowing you and so and uh, trust is such a huge thing so you know we need to be vulnerable or we need to feel that we're safe so we can be vulnerable and this is the hard thing about like having the the muscle on or having the power on it, it's like a for me anyway it was like a um armor you know and so trust is a huge thing when you go into ceremony or even online when you trust that you can be vulnerable in terms of allowing emotions to arise up which is healing or allowing you know tremors in the body to shake out because the trauma is in the nervous system it's not in your mind it's in your hands it's in your feet it's in your kidneys it's in your pelvis and some of the big spots are holding it would be in your in your in your hip flexors and your psoas muscle as well recognized as being a very emotional type of muscle from what you said there we hold a lot of emotion in our nervous system the hands feet mm. when i was doing the the breath work with you and even my brother owen was doing it the other week and i noticed that a couple of points now we it's even come up when me and Cormac have been doing a bit of breath work ourselves and it's like a lot of shaking in the body as if and it feels to me sometimes like it's a bit of stress or a bit of nerves maybe leaving if i could describe it it's just I kind of nearly go into a, a bit of a spasm, a bit of a spasm. And it's like, <laughs> my hands are just flapping in my head. I'm like, if anybody walks in now, they're going to ring an ambulance. Right? You know, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't last long. It's just very quick. And it, it does feel like a bit of a release after. Is that, is that normal? So do you ever watch the, the nature channels and you, you might've seen a deer or an impala or something getting chased by a lion and then it gets away and it lies down on the grass and it shakes off. It gets up, mm. wags his tail and runs off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's just they that's how they get rid of trauma. Mm. That's okay. so so when they're when they're like fight or flight has really kicked in, it's it's overburdened the system and they you know, a lot of them you know will say defecate before they as it before it happens to make space in their nervous system. Oh. And that's what the, the term says they shit yourself you know they yeah, you know <laughs> so you shit yourself so that you have space in your nervous system to, to 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 function or support that and so like the impala would have shooken it off and got back and, but the problem is when we go into trauma we hold on to it because our minds are trying to work it out mm. so like trauma could be you had a fucking bad argument with somebody a friend or a, a spouse or whatever and, and be like you know, and it's all, and you go like, fucking grinding the teeth, and you wouldn't sleep that well, or you know, that's so. There's tra little bits of trauma that come into the body, and they're held in the body, or held in the nervous system. O other ways, how it would be like you'd have a, you know, a, a car crash or a, a rugby tackle. You know, there's all that kind. Of, that's all trauma as well that's gone into the body, and it's in the nervous system. We don't treat the nervous system; we just treat. And the and and the breath work is the gateway to the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So when you're breathing in that in that sense, and you're you're kind of surrendering or you're giving in to the to the flow of the breath, there's the body has found a space within its within to let go of part of a buildup. That could be emotional. Uh, usually, it's emotional, or our our physical. So it's either physical or emotional. Just release that has just. You were the impala right then, you know, shaking it off and it's out of the nervous system and you've got it, your nervous system has got more space now. I think people don't even realize their micro stressors building up. Well, that's, I suppose, because they're so small until you let them go. Like sometimes doing the breath work session, I realize once something comes to a solution or it's resolved in a breath work session, I realized the amount of weight I was carrying around in the form of stress after it's gone because it's i feel so much lighter so i think 
there's loads yeah. of people probably going around with loads of built up stress that don't even realize what's doing to well, them. why why would you feel like you feel lighter because there's tension release mm. so that's you're like oh you feel looser that's why you feel lighter yes. um yeah. but it's um yeah i mean this this it's the chronic state of the west mm. world and ireland right now is that we've got so many you know, so it's not fight or flight that you have. You're not trying to get away from a hippo or a lion or whatever it is. And we're not, you know, we're not fighting each other in clans. So our, so what we do have is 40 emails or a boss that we don't get on with or a poor relationship of communication between a partner or a brother or a family member. Um, traffic, you know. All these little things are the are the cumulative effect of of stress in the in the nervous system, which turn into a disease mm-hmm. in the body. We were only talking about there with a different guy there before, and we were just saying the importance of having something in place to get rid of those micro stressors, as we call mm-hmm. them. And me and Cormac had this; he'd done a calendar, and it's having certain things in place daily, weekly, monthly every half year and every year, say, yeah. different things in place to flush out those micro stressors. So an example for the daily could be meditation. Mm-hmm. The weekly could be a sea swim, a breath work session, like the one with yourself, Ronan. Monthly could be gathering in a, in, in a circle, whether it's men, mixed, speaking about how you feel. Maybe yearly could be more of a deeper spiritual experience, mm. but having something in place I've only realized is so key now to, to, to flush those out because those little stresses, like you said, even just little arguments with people, um, emails, like they, they really build up and, mm. and they just they manifest into something mm. totally unnecessary. Whereas if we have these little rituals or things in place just to, just to flush them out or flush most of them out, so that they don't build up. I, I completely agree and um, completely agree. And what, but also what happens when that buildup happens and it doesn't become regulated or we don't have a method of distributing it, what we often turn to is a reward system. And the reward system is, is, is sugar or the reward system is whatever the hook might be. So then we become this dopamine response for, you know, and again, coming down to feeling that I'm not good enough. And if you're not good enough and you feel that something like sugar or chocolate or alcohol will make you feel better or mm-hmm. drugs, um, you know, we, and we go down that cycle. But I completely agree with you. I mean, it's, it's you know, there's, there's so much coming at us now because of technology. Uh, our, our brains have got to, have, have had to fast forward their development capability just so we can stay sane, you know? Mm. So the whole, and, and, you know, again, the whole, the parad- or the, the paradox of the, the social, you might've seen the social dilemma even would be a good reference. Um, but just, we've got to be so, we're social beings and even, even society is so, you know, there's, there's certain questions you ask certain people and there's isn't conversations you have with other people. And so it's a, you're always kind of on your guard as a navigation, you know, unless you just don't give a crap, which is great, you know, 